And welcome to Storytime with me, Mr. Reed. Now, Clare County Library have sent me another amazing story, and this one is called The Tale of an Unexpected Adventure in Fantasyland, written by Sophie Boyce, who's aged nine. Now, it's quite long, but we will get through it as best we can, so here we go. Once upon a time, the Duster family went to the beach campsite on a two-week holiday with their caravan. The family included their mum, dad, baby sister Belle, big brother Charlie, who liked to be called Charming, and the twins Lily and Tilly. Lily and Tilly were very excited to be going to the sea as they loved mermaids and imagined one day they would meet mermaids and fairies. <laughs> The brother Charlie always teased him about believing in mermaids and fairies, even though he had a fantasy of his own. That one day he would marry a beautiful princess and he would be her Prince Charming. When they reached the campsite, they were all very hungry, so they unpacked their picnic and began to eat. Charlie loved to be perfect at everything. His mother loved being posh and so highly approved of Charlie. <laughs> After the picnic, they all went to the shop near the beach and they each got 40 euro. Yes, their mother was very rich. And the twins combined their money to buy a mini boat for both of them. A mini boat for both of them. <laughs> Tongue twister. They had some money left over. So they bought a mermaid notebook each. Charlie bought scuba diving gear. They went back to the campsite to enjoy some family time. When night fell, they sat on logs around a campfire and toasted marshmallows. Oh, I love toasted marshmallows. The fire was burning out, so the twins were asked to collect sticks along the beach because, well, Charlie had fallen asleep on his deck chair. <laughs> While they were down at the beach, they saw a strange figure sitting on a rock out at sea. <gasps> Could this be the mermaid they'd always dreamed about meeting? The girls knew it was too late to investigate, so they decided to come back the next day. That night, the girls could hardly sleep with excitement, and when they finally fell asleep, they both dreamt about meeting a wonderful mermaid. The next morning, the twins ate their breakfast so quickly that Lily had the hiccups for about an hour. They asked their mother if they could take a picnic down to the beach and explore the area. She wanted Charlie to go with them, but he was nowhere to be found. So the twins set off secretly happy that Charlie was not there. <laughs> Lily and Tilly made their way to the beach to untie their boat that was waiting on the shore. They got in and started off on their adventure. Lily got so excited she nearly topped the boat over. As they neared the rock where they saw the beautiful young mermaid with long red hair and a lovely green tail. She looked scared at first but when she saw the girls smiling at her she smiled back and beckoned to them to come closer. She introduced herself as Myla the mermaid. The twins were shocked and excited to think that their fantasy had come true. Myla liked the girl, so she thought she would make their adventure even more special. She opened her locket and a beautiful rainbow of light appeared. The twins found themselves whirling through a magical tunnel which led them to a fantasy land. Suddenly, the twins were no longer in a boat on the sea. They were in a carriage in Fantasyland being pulled by a unicorn. Yes, a unicorn. Meanwhile, Charlie had returned to the campsite where his mom told him to go down to the beach and check on the twins. When Charlie got to the beach, he caught sight of a little pink object bobbing up and down in the sea by a rock. It was the girl's boat. He called out to Tilly and Lily, Tilly, Tilly. But there was no response. So he ran back to the campsite to grab his scuba diving gear and swim out to the boat. Back in Fantasyland, the girls danced with fairies and unicorns, ate ice cream from an ice cream fountain and stuffed their pockets with treats from the sweet stall. They had the most wonderful time until a dark cloud formed in the sky above them. The music stopped and the fairies froze in fear and the unicorns ran for cover like frightened horses. What was happening, wondered, wondered the twins. Then, 
From out of nowhere, a scary-looking fairy appeared from the clouds, laughing wickedly. <laughs> On her neck was Myla's magical locket. She spoke in a loud, booming voice. I have found a young boy called Charlie. He was holding Maya's necklace, so I have captured him. Ever since the king banished me from this kingdom, I have longed to get back into this place. I now have Charlie as a prisoner at my castle. The twins were raging with anger because, although their brother was always mean, they still loved him. Lily had picked up a very sharp knife from the cake table and was waving it about like she wanted to attack the mean fairy. Which she did, she really did want to. And Tilly was trying out some karate moves she saw on TV. Hiya! Both girls looked ready for a fight. The fairy just laughed at them <laughs> and disappeared into thin air. After that, everyone was speechless. Tilly was the first one to speak. She spoke in a wobbly voice asking if anyone knew where the evil fairy lived. A fairy called Rose told them she knew where the fairy lived and she said she would bring them to the castle on one condition, that they never went back to the castle on their own for it was dangerous without magic to save themselves if ever they were caught. The, girl, the girls promised to do as the fairy asked them so led them through a long winding path towards a scary looking forest. They crossed a wobbly rope bridge and finally reached the evil fairy's castle. It looked dark and dangerous, covered in briars and bushes, and the girls were glad to have the fairy with them to guide them. They crept closer to the castle and hid behind some briars and bushes. There was a scary looking tiger guarding the door and the evil fairy was looking out a window at the bottom of the castle. Charlie, who was at the very top of the building, was screaming for help. Help! Suddenly, they saw another fairy that resembled the evil fairy in the lift shouting at Charlie to be quiet or she would turn him into a toad. Ribbit. <laughs> when Rose saw their puzzled faces, she quickly explained that the other fairy was the evil fairy's twin. Just then, as if the tiger wanted to help them, he pushed the door open and went inside, leaving the door unguarded. Quick, said Rose, we need to be fast. The evil fairy is gone from the window. Come on in through the door. There's no one here. Just then, Tilly stopped dead in her tracks. Quick, hide! The tiger is coming, she said in a panicky voice. But there's nowhere to hide, Lily shouted. We will have to make a run for the stairs, shouted Rose. But there's no time, Lily shouted. Well, if you come, we might just make it, she said, and dragged them along behind her just as the tiger approached the door. The girls got up and to the stairs, ran up the stairs two steps at a time, but only to bump right into the evil fairy's evil twin. She grabbed them by the hand and dragged them into a dark room where they found their brother Charlie. Charlie was shocked to see a fairy and his sisters. Tilly winked at him as if to say, we have come to rescue you, and he winked back. The evil fairy walked out and slammed the door behind her, locking it. They all looked worried, but Rose didn't. I know how to escape, she said, giggling and pointing towards the window. I can't believe the evil fairy didn't think of the window. I am a fairy after all, and I have wings and a magic wand. But Rose, we don't have wings. How are we supposed to escape? Simple, said Rose. I'll just give you all wings. Wings, said the twins excitedly. Real fairy wings. Oh, well, not exactly. The wings will only last until we get back to the Fantasyland party, said Rose. She took out her magic wand from her pocket and zapped wings onto the girls. Charlie didn't want fairy wings, so he tried to avoid being zapped and ran around the room. But Rose was too quick for him and zapped wings onto him. They flew out the window and headed back to the Fantasyland party. Charlie, however, decided he would not go quietly and flew down behind the evil fairy who was in the lift and kicked her straight out. She fell to the ground and landed on the tiger who was guarding the door below. As she fell, Charlie snatched Myla's locket, which was hanging around her neck. Then he flew back to the party and everyone cheered as Charlie told them what he had done. They chatted and celebrated until Charlie said, we'd better be get going or mom and dad will be worried about us. Myla was sad to have to say goodbye to her new friends, 
but they promised to come back and visit her on the rock again soon. She opened her necklace and more magical light shone out. The twins and Charlie disappeared into the beautiful light and found themselves back on the beach where they had started their adventure. They had the most wonderful time that they would never forget, but decided they would not tell anybody about their adventures in Fantasyland. This was going to be a special memory between the three of them. <gasps> the end. What a wonderful story. And remember, we love reading stories. So if you've written a story, we would love to hear it. So until the next time, keep reading, keep writing. Bye. Bye.